All right, I'm the Flight Rate Master, and today we're talking about why R&R guys need to be paid more. All the diagnostic guys get all the credit for being, you know, the, the savers in the shop, shop foremans like me, where we come in, we diagnose something the other guys can't fix, we become the hero, we get the big bucks. But R&R guys are just as valuable as diagnostic guys. Maybe not to the same level, but think about it. What does your shop do day in, day out? r and &R parts. A good r and &R tech is worth their weight in gold. Think about it. You sick a technician on swapping that engine, it's on the ground in you know, record time, they make good time, they don't break stuff, they get it back, they get it running as efficiently as possible. If they can make time on heavy line, big r and &R jobs, worth their weight in gold. Maybe not to the same extent as a diagnostic tech, but in this industry, most R&R techs that are R&R guys are usually not paid the best. I don't, I don't get that. I don't like doing R&R. I don't like doing engines. I don't like doing transmissions. Not my strong suit. I can do them, I can do them efficiently, but it's not the stuff I like to do. A good R&R tech loves doing it. They want to pull that engine out, swap it out, get it running again. They get a lot of satisfaction from that. And so many in our industry are undervalued for what they bring to the shop. Having a good r and tech makes those kind of jobs so much easier. When you got a tech, you can just sick on that job. They don't need intervention. They don't need you know help. They just go, 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 go until it's done. Boom, done. Being efficient as an r and tech, especially a heavy line tech, immeasurable. When you sick them on it, they just go until that job's done. Makes life as a manager so easy. And I don't understand why they're not as valued higher than they are. Maybe some shops do pay well for it, but I find most shops for that level of tech don't really pay all that great. Ah, he's just nuts and bolts and he ain't worth his weight, you know, whatever. Pay him, you know, $15 an hour. Wrong. <laughs> the amount of efficiency a tech like that can bring to a shop, especially one that does a lot of that kind of stuff, is immeasurable. You know, a drama-free engine job is rare. We all know it. You know, nine times out of 10, engine from the junkyard came with this problem, that problem, that problem etc. You know, very rarely is it drama free. Reducing the amount of drama you have in those jobs is immeasurable. Just think about it. You, you take a job that could be very expensive, you know, one little mistake could be a thousand dollars. You know, they put the engine down on ABS, you know, hard lines and crushed it and you got to fix it. You know, other things, you know, dropping a transmission out or whatever. When you've got a good r and r that can bust through that work without drama, money. You're, the shop's making the margin on the part, the tech should be making the margin on the labor, if you know what I mean. And I think that's something that really does need to be addressed in this industry more widely than it is. I mean, it, I'm sure there's lots of r and techs that make good money, but I know a lot of r and techs that don't. Because they're not diagnostic guys, a lot of shops undervalue what they bring to the table. And that is sad because they can bring so much. We all know diagnostics, if you don't charge for it, especially if you don't charge right for it, it's a very expensive thing to have in your shop. <laughs> diagnostic guy that doesn't carry his work. That's why most diagnostic guys wanna be hourly <laughs> because it's rarely billed for properly. R&R guys, however, are billed for properly. You know, there was a discussion on Facebook as used engines, how should I bill it? At least long block, <laughs> not complete engine because <laughs> you're swapping over a lot of stuff that's probably broke. R&R guys should be paid more. There's just no way around it. They should be more valued in this industry for what they do. I mean, straight up, they come in, they knock out that heavy, job that a lot of people don't want to do. Same thing with, you know, techs that like doing dash work. 
That's a rare breed, but there's techs out there that absolutely love it. Those guys should be well paid too, especially if your shop does a lot of that kind of stuff because, well, I'm not efficient at it because I'm fat, old, and unflexible, <laughs> and I don't fit well under dashes. I'm a big dude. Not just fat, I'm also just a big dude. Big hands, etc. If you got a, a tech that likes doing that stuff, they should be well compensated as well. Because again, I've seen mistakes on a dash pull cost thousands of dollars. You know, you break an ignition switch module on a Nissan, it's a thousand dollars. Just because you didn't unhook it. <laughs> just saying. Same, same category. I mean, they're just the same category because they bring so much when they're good at it. You know, they can do a dash pull that they've never done before under book because they know where manufacturers like to hide stuff. They know how to get the service information to figure out where those little miscellaneous bolts are that won't let the dash come out. So those go in the same category as heavy line techs. They should be compensated well for what they bring to your shop. I know this was preachy, but we gotta pay these guys because my fat butt doesn't want to do either one of those jobs. I will, I don't want them. <laughs> so as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.